I create a lot of new Phoenix projects to test stuff out, and I always run the Phoenix Gen Auth generator. But one of my complaints about it is it only has text bodies out of the box. It doesn't show you how to make HTML bodies for your emails. And you can figure it out yourself. It's not that hard. There's a number of ways you can do it. But I usually end up having two different sets of content, a text body and an HTML body function. And it's kind of a pain. So I wanted to generate the text from the HTML. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So one quick note. What I'm going to show you does not use Phoenix Swoosh. It's a package that is kind of an add-on to the Swoosh package that Phoenix uses for emails out of the box. That package, Phoenix Swoosh, has a templating system, but it reminds me a lot of how templates used to work before the version of Phoenix that removed views. I think that was Phoenix 1.7 or something like that. I don't really like how that package works and I tried it myself a little bit here and there and I just it's not my favorite so I'm gonna show you a different way so here we are in our project all I did was run mix Phoenix new I called it example and I ran the mix Phoenix gen auth generator and when you run that generator you get a file that looks like this called user notifier and it has these examples of emails out of the box for confirmation, reset password, that kind of thing. And this is what I'm talking about here. As you can see, this is just text. And this, this body of this content just goes right here. And this email will only be text. And this is what one of those emails looks like. It's just text. As you can see, that's kind of the problem. We want HTML. So the first part is pretty easy to do. We're going to make a new function, and I've already written it here, called confirmation content, because we're going to be working with this confirmation email. And you can see it's just a Phoenix component. You know it's a Phoenix component because it takes and assigns and returns heeks. In order to put Phoenix components in this file, we need to import Phoenix component at the top, but then we can write this function, and the content is the same as what we would write here. And then we need a function to render this from the Phoenix component down to actual HTML in a string. And that's going to look something like this. We can, all we have to do is just pass it to Phoenix HTML safe to IO data. And then there's a function to convert that IO data to binary, and that's it. So the result of this will be plain text. All we have to do is in the deliver function, we'll create an assigns map and pass in anything that needs to be available to the component, in this case, the URL. And then we're going to add HTML body down here, and it's going to receive the results of calling confirmation content with the assigns map, passed to heeks to HTML, and then passed to HTML body. And this is what that would look like. So now we've got HTML, and we can open the email, and there it is, it's HTML. It looks a little bit nicer, I guess. One of the problems with this approach, though, is now you've got two functions. As you can see, I've got confirmation content uh, with my HTML, and then I have the text version here. So I have to maintain two different versions. So that's kind of a pain. I think it can be improved. And the way I'm going to improve it is I'm going to generate the text from this HTML version. So we can do that with a very simple function. We're going to add a function called HTML to text that's going to receive the rendered HTML. And it's just going to pass it to Flocky, which is an HTML parser that comes with Phoenix out of the box. And then we're going to call the text function on it that's going to convert it. And the only thing we need to do is tell it to put a separator between each tag so that there's some space between each tag. One thing you will need to do, however, is come to your mix.exs file and remove this only test line from the file so it's available in all environments. But once we've done that, we can change this. We can now save the HTML version to a variable. And then we will generate the text from that by just calling that function we wrote and then we'll pass in the text version and the HTML version. 
and then we can look at what that looks like. It looks the exact same. We're generating the exact same content, but now we only have one piece of content to manage. So that's an improvement, but we can go a step farther. We can make it look nice now that we have HTML. So we're going to use Phoenix components to build a little layout system. So here's what that layout system is going to look like. All we need is a function. We can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it email layout, and it's going to be a Phoenix component. And it's going to have the basic HTML boilerplate with a slot in the middle in the body. And then we're just going to wrap that whole confirmation content function in the email layout component. And now when we render this, it's going to be an actual HTML document. It's going to have all these tags. And we can add a style tag then and we can put some default styles in there. So I'm going to add this in here. I wrote this earlier and you can add whatever you want. Now that we've added that style tag, we're going to want to come down to the HTML to text function and add this line here. We're going to want to render only the body now. Now that we have content in the head, we don't want to render the head. So I made another account on the app and here's what we got now. Now we have actual styles and I'll click the link to make it bigger here. And here's what we got. I think it looks pretty good. Like I said, these are just some default styles that I messed around with and I think look nice. It's just a little bit different margins and using the system font stack and it tries to be a little responsive. So I definitely think it's an improvement over what we had before, which was no styling. And critically, it's just not that much code. We added a pretty good looking transactional email with just this. I think this is definitely an improvement over what you get out of the box. One caveat, however, that needs to be pointed out. This is not what you should be doing if you are making marketing emails where you really care that they have to look the same on every email client because you have really specific branding or something like that. If you know anything about emails and CSS, you will know that this is not how you are supposed to do it. You are supposed to do inline styling because it's better supported by all email clients. So if you know a lot about email, you can just go ahead and do that and your emails will look the same on every client. I'm not doing that here for a couple reasons. The main reason being these are transactional emails. I don't really care if they look a little different on different email clients. I just want them to look good enough on most clients and that's fine with me. So that's why I'm using a style tag here with non inline styles but you need to be aware that this might not look the same everywhere. And if you do care about them looking the same everywhere, I would use something like MJML, or there's a number of other things out there that let you style emails without having to know all the quirks of how to do inline styles correctly for every single email client out there. So I would definitely look at something like that if you really care about how they look and you're doing marketing email in Phoenix for some reason. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to be copy and pasting this kind of a thing into my Phoenix projects going forward. And I'm going to link in the description. I have an article that I wrote in text form where you can copy these examples out if you want to try this yourself.